Hello everyone, this is Crota, and I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of Tomb of the Rose Knight's Dungeon in Hex Shards of Fate, Chronicles of Entrath, book number one. So here we are, I here I have my level 8 human mage. I am going to be entering in the dungeon, and a couple of things to note. First of all, I'll give you a quick look at the deck itself. The deck is built specifically to handle this dungeon. It has some interesting, interesting mechanics in the dungeon itself that you really need to deal with. So go ahead and take a look at this deck over here. There are really, there is two legendaries in the deck. Zakoi High Cleric, not too expensive. I think it's like 120, 180 plat, maybe 12,000 12, gold if you really, really want to save up for it. Gorefests are going to are gonna be some of the key cards. Deathless Guardians are some of the key cards as well. But more on that once I go ahead and jump inside. So I know a lot of people, including myself, had a really difficult time with this particular dungeon. And it's really the first dungeon in Hex Shards of Fate that really gives you that MMO feel. Now, depending on if you're Ardent or if you're Underworld, your encounters are actually going to be different. But the dungeon is still the same. So here I am, I'm going up against Moxum since I am part of the Ardent Alliance. And for those of you guys who have not figured it out, all, all Necrotics, their names are Palindrome. So Moxum, O-M-O-X-O-M same forward or backwards. So all the necrotic guys that you are fighting are going to be like that. Now, one of the reasons why I really liked um really like this dungeon is because it really shows what exactly um it really shows what Hex was able to do thematically in this game. Now, um on a board like this, you may be thinking how exactly is is Hex any different how does it really feel like an mmo what can they do with the cards what can they do with the encounters and that's really some of the questions that i had i'm like what can they really do to make this game feel like an mmo and they answered my questions perfectly in this particular um, dungeon so right here and um, i'm going up against a necrotic this necrotic right here he just has um he's just kind of like the enemy team guarding the front door i need to beat beat him down in order to be able to make my way through he's going to be dropping down an underworld recruiter um your underworld troops in all zones have cost minus one um very 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 powerful card actually something that i should probably try and get rid of as quickly as possible but I'm not going to be able to do that all too easily just quite yet. I'm going to go ahead and use my charge power. Now I have five. Um, I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and drop a Vanguard here. Uh, the Vanguard is Swift Strike and plus one, plus one, since I have a Ruby Shard. Um, it should be a, a fairly cheap card to grab also from the Auction House, since it is a common from set two. Deal some damage. Lightning Elemental, every time it deals combat damage, it I also get a charge as well. So this is one of the ways that I'm able to constantly use my charge power so i can constantly use my spells i'm still waiting to get to a higher level oh wow all right so and, and go from there um let's go ahead and take a look at this i'm gonna drop this down i'm gonna play a diamond threshold since i do have some double diamond threshold cards but i'm gonna drop an inner conflict on the shadow blade assassin um, inner conflict says that he cannot attack or block and at the start of the turn there's a 50% chance that this battles a random troop you control so he's going to end up fighting one of his own guys and because he has leaf lethal he could easily start wiping out his own side of the board um, inner conflict uh, uh, is a common card should be fairly easy to get the equipment may be a little bit more difficult to, to try and come across. Um, oh, that did not proc. Okay, so is he going to shift the lethal over? Oh, dust claim. All right, so let's see what's going to be happening there. Oh, he's going to swing for two. Uh, I'll, I'll gladly take that two damage. All right, let's 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 go ahead and see what's going to continue to go move along here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and inner conflict there as well. Take him out of the fight. Drop down another vanguard. And now I will swing for five damage. So both of those guys are unable to block. They are going to be most likely combating each one of them should be at least trying to fight each other. Let's see. Oh, who did that? Oh, he, I guess he fought himself and that's why he died. 
Oh, there's that. Okay, if I get a diamond... Sh if I get a ruby shard, I automatically win. Nope, I get a diamond shard. Let's see. Oh, I still automatically win. So, living totem, drop it down. Use my charge power. I'm going to go ahead and attack. Like that. Only two things can block, but I'm going to give um, every everything plus one, plus one this turn, allowing my lightning elemental to push through that damage and, and ensuring me the victory. So easy, easy push through there. Living totems also very useful. I know if you guys are brand new to the game, there are a lot of cards in my deck that that are a little bit more expensive. I'm, I'm trying not to use any of the crazy, crazy control decks that are currently out there. Um, decks can easily run into the multiple hundreds of dollars if you are trying to get like a high-end PvP deck. But in the PvE, you should be able to get away with a lot of commons, a, a lot of commons, uncommons, and maybe just some rares to get yourself through it. All right, a little bit of a conversation here. If you guys want to read it, you guys can pause it. I've already read through all of this talk already. Now, this fight, I really enjoyed. This fight was was one of those fights that thematically made a lot of sense. I am someone coming across a room full of very, very hungry zombies. That's all this is. I'm walking into a room with a lot of hungry zombies. And the zombies are currently too preoccupied eating other people's corpses than to deal with me. And that's exactly what you have here. Also, um, as an as an ardent, I start the game off with a flask of holy water. And if you take a look at these ravenous zombies, it says it must attack. At the start of your turn, void a random non-zombie non troop in a crypt. If you do exhaust this. What that means is, thematically, that the zombies are in a room and they're just eating the corpses in the room. So you can see, because there are a whole... There was a... Well, essentially a platoon of units that were um, sent into this room and taken out by the zombies, I'm going to be able to walk in here now. And that's just um, really, really useful for me. All right, what am I going to do next? I am going to drop um, a Shard of Conquest. I will give myself an empty diamond threshold. And one of my talents says one of the cards in my top five cards gets cost minus two. So turn one, I get a living totem. So very, very strong, strong card right there. The ravenous zombies are still too busy eating other, well, other troops in the crypts right now to really deal with me. So um, a, a little bit useful right there as I am going to be dropping a second diamond threshold and placing down a Highlands Shinobi. And we'll go from there. So... I'm not going to attack because that kill larva is going to take out my living totem right now. But if he attacks back, my Highlands Shinobi with Swift Strike should be able to, to take care of that without a problem. All right, so what is he going to get? He's going to get Rage. Is he going to attack? Nope, obviously not, as he's going to be coming in across over there. All right. Now let's go ahead and place down a Ruby Threshold. And this is where you can start playing a little bit of of tricks on your on your um, opponent. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to pass priority. I'm going to attack. He should end up blocking here the kill larva. He should not block, but he does end up blocking. I'm gonna give uh, my guys swift strike, meaning my living totem will be dealing damage back first meaning the lethal does not um, hit back on the living totem and my troop stays alive. Now, living totem is perhaps one of the cards that the AI still has not figured out how to beat consistently. And um, that's going to be one of those things that as the game moves further and further along, the AI, AI is supposedly going to get better and better. He's going to attack me for one. Um, I'm, I'm not really all too concerned about that right there. Oh, and another Duskwing and a Spiderling now coming in as well. All right, so mo moving right along, uh, I'm going to drop down a Ruby Shard. I am going to exhaust 
Uh, this guy. I'm gonna attack. Attack for four. He's not blocking, perfect. Pass priority. Drop down a living totem. And here I am going to uh, destroy one of his zombies, making sure that there is enough troops in the discard, or the crypts, excuse me, to um, exhaust them all again. Now, if he doesn't leave any blockers, I should be able to win this. Uh, well, I'm, I may not, may not, maybe not just quite yet. Let's see. So, okay, so there's that. Oh, he brought out another blocker. All right, let's see. Nope, I got it. So, play down a diamond shard, exhaust the spiderling from the Highland Shinobi. When you gain a charge, exhaust target opposing troop. Resolve it, so that's gonna exhaust. I'm gonna give myself plus one, plus one, and then swing for 10 with him being completely exhausted. And that will, sh that should win me the game. Yep, there you go. So clearing out the Ravaging Ghoul thematically, if those, if I wasn't fast enough at dealing with either the zombies or, uh, or yeah, if I wasn't fast enough to um, kill the opponent, then I would have to deal with the zombies. Now, I thought my deck was fast enough to deal with the zombies or to deal with my opponent, so I didn't have to really focus onto the zombies. I could have perhaps started trying to kill some of those zombies as well. All of that is possible. Now, there is an optional fight here in the Crypt of the Thorn Knight. One of the most difficult fights in the game. Just leave the room. Uh, if you want to go back for the challenge, you will have to go ahead and check out that particular fight a little bit later. But I always go in there just because it really... Um, I, don't, I don't know if there's any bonus for clearing that out. I don't know if I get a little bit more gold, a little bit more experience at the end. And that's all things that you kind of want to be aware of. As I'm now moving right along into another fight here, Blight Magus. If you read the dialogue, I'm fighting in um, in some sort of artifact-filled room. And all of a sudden, um, a fight ensues and I grab, my character randomly grabs an artifact from off the wall. And I'm going to be given that random artifact. And I am going to be given, uh, what am I going to be given? A Talisman of Vitae, which says, every time I use my charge power, I gain... A little bit of health equal to wh whatever I use as my charge. So I will gain three health every time I use my charge power. Could be pr or will be pretty useful here as we now move along. All right, let's see. Oh, living totem turn two. Living the dream. Look at that. Look at that living totem. Such such a solid card. Uh, pay three. All living totems in all zones get plus one plus one or Swift Strike. So it's basically one of those growing threats. If you do not have Living Totems, definitely get them. Um, I, I think as it is one of those really solid PVE cards that if you can somehow grab, definitely do so. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and play down a Crackling Vortex. Go ahead, gain some life. I'm gonna attack here. Deal two damage. And place down a... Ooh, wait. I, I remember now. If he deal... If he gets his charge power, Plague Blast, deal 10 to 20 damage. So if he gets 10 charges, I'm pretty much screwed. <laughs> I'm in a lot of trouble. And whenever a troop you control deals damage to an opposing champion, gain a charge. So I do not want him to gain any charges. Since I'm going to burn that right there. All right. I could have used Repel as well on the follow-up. Yeah, maybe I should have done that. All right, let's see. Ooh, another Crackling Vortex. All right, so gain a little bit of life again. I will swing here. I'm assuming that he is just not going to block. I am going to Soothsay, draw a card, then choose and discard a card. Oh, wow. I will choose to discard uh, the Spearcliff 
Cloud Knight. I don't really need that since I do have the Vanguard and an Ethereal Healer. Both very, very solid cards that um, can definitely help me out here. All right, so he's going to come in. He's going to be able to swing. And now... Ooh, what is this? When I mean, this dies, this gets cost minus one in all zones. All right. So I'm going to play this guy. Ooh, I would love, love, love to be able to play the Zakoi right now. But I do believe um, he is just going to block here. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to swing here. He will most likely block. I'm going to give my guys a swift, swift strike. Well, right there, swift strike. And I will be able to deal combat damage first. And take that out with no problem whatsoever. And now my following turn, I should be able to play Zakoi, the High Cleric, and finish things off. Oh, he's going to be swinging in for three damage. I'm going to repel him. Destroy target attacking troop. He's gone. Oh, he's going to rot cast me. No. Doesn't matter. I still got this. All right. So... Play another Diamond Shard. Plays a Koi. He comes into play. He deals four damage because of his Major Ruby Gem. Major Ruby Gems. These two gems right here are actually cards that you can swap out. I opted to put in the Damage Gem and give him speed so he can attack the turn he comes into play. And you can see how effective that's going to be as I finish off my opponent right here. If I didn't kill my opponent, the Koi... Um, allows me to get another combat phase with an, with Zakoi and one other troop. Very, very strong. Very, very powerful. And off and is also useful in one of the ways to defeat the Goliath later on. Alright. Now, so far it looks like I am cakewalking through this. Um, and, I, and I'm doing a pretty uh, a very, very easy job right now since I knew all of the encounters in, in this um, particular fight so far yeah please don't yay my i'm so glad i had to like dust out my computer three times before my computer stopped randomly um getting white screened and having the nvidia drivers crash every single time i tried to play this game okay let me keep this hand all right let's see he's gonna do that okay there's a phantom Ridge Tusker is a 0-1 Rage. Rage, every time you attack, gain plus one attack, whatever your Rage number is. And just ba basically go from there. So right now it deals what it will deal one damage. Oh no, Deathless Guardian. I did not want to see a Deathless Guardian. Oh, perfect. That actually helps me out tremendously. It's going to be very difficult to try and stop that Deathless Guardian. Oh no. When this... While this is socketed... Okay. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to block there then. I'll, I'll gladly trade that. Okay, here I'm going to play a Crackling Vortex. Play the Vanguard down. So now I have a 3-2 Swift Strike. Which should make it much more difficult for him to attack. He's going to still be attacking with that Flyer. Of course. Oh, and he has a Spirit Hound. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is going to be a very, very difficult fight here in just a moment. How am I gonna? How am I gonna deal with this phantom? This phantom is, oh, 
yeah, let me get rid of the the Tusker. So his his um, charge power was each opposing champion sacrifices a non-spirit troop. He's still gonna attack there. All right. And a spirit eagle. You gotta be kidding me. All right. So I am going to play. I'll play this. Go double red. Play that. Do this. And you know what? I'm going to polymorph this 3-2 flyer into something else. Yep. It is now a 2-3 rigid buffalo. And he's not going to attack with anything anymore. And now I should be able to start pushing through significant damage. I am going to give this guy plus one, plus one. And now I'm going to give everyone Steadfast and Flight. So I can attack with everything this turn and still have all of my blockers. I would not have enough to to flat out win there. We'll triple block there just in case he tries to get fancy. Attack with those two. Give them plus one. And now I am on to the final fight after King Edmund. All right. Quick, quick run through of this dungeon. And now you go to the Chained Goliath. Or the Chained Goliath. For those of you guys who don't know the mechanics, spoiler alert, if you want to try it for the first time, stop watching. Play it first. HexTCG.com. Go ahead and download it. Otherwise, I will be... I'm going into the Chain Goliath encounter. And this was the first encounter in the first dungeon that I actually lost. So the Chain Goliath is essentially a, this giant chained zombie up against the wall. It starts off with 40 life and it can't do anything up until it turns, it gets down to 25 life. Once it gets down to 25 life, it breaks free from the wall and essentially wipes your entire board. Um, it, it can deal up to five damage to every troop you control, and then it just starts pushing through crazy, crazy, crazy amounts of damage. Now, the deck that I designed has two ways to deal with this. It can either try and push through damage before your opponent has um, is able to deal with it, or it it tries to deal with it with um, with those guardians, uh, the e eternal guardian that prevents all combat damage against your warriors. And there is a large number of warriors in this deck. Um, I do not see any of the cards that I really need here. I could try and draw again. You know what? I'm going to try and draw again. Let's see if I can grab something I need. Um, well, that actually helps because Gorefest does definitely help here. So what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll keep this hand. And I, I start with the Flask of Holy Water. And I'm going to go ahead and play down a shard here. I'm going to grab a... Oh, I, I should have played the spell sprite first to see what I... If I grab a diamond, if I grab a deathless guardian. Okay, well, that, that actually worked out well. So there, I, I'm okay for now. Can I push through enough damage? That is the question. So he he does... He dealt one point of damage to himself. And now it's up to me. I need to try and...
get as close to uh, well get as close to 25 damage without actually getting the 25 damage until I have enough um, well enough ways to to push him over and the gore fest the gore fest will definitely help me with that so I'm gonna push through one damage here because I do think it's safe enough for now he oh wow he did three damage okay so now I gotta be I gotta be careful of that Okay, what am I gonna grab here? Ooh, a Deathless Guardian. Perfect. So the Deathless Guardian here ensures even if I mess up tremendously, I am I'm still gonna be okay. Just because the Deathless Guardian prevents all non-combat damage that would be dealt to non-opposing warriors. The Vanguard is a warrior, so is the Deathless Guardian here. Uh I can I can... I'll hit for one. I don't want to do too much damage. Draw a card here. Or, yeah, I'll use that there. So I should be able to drop the Ethereal Healer next turn. And... Alright, he's now currently at 32. He only deals 1 to 2 damage right now because of the Deathless Guardian. Opposing no, opposing non-combat damage is reduced by one. So the most damage that he can I can I can deal four damage to him. So what I will do four damage to him exactly. So I will place down the ethereal healer. If I deal four damage to him, he will hold on. Seven damage. Yeah, I can he has he's seven damage away. So I can deal four damage to him and I will be safe. So there is four damage. Oh, I hope I'm not off by one. The lowest he can get is 26. Okay, 27. I'm still okay for right now. And now next turn he can go down to 25, so I don't want that. I'm going to go ahead and play the Diamond Shard. Play Gore Feast. It, I guess I basically get two combat phases and everything gets to attack twice. So that was 10. That's 15 damage. And this is one of the basic strategies to try and take out the, the Chain Goliath. You basically push through 25 points of damage in one turn or more than 25 points of damage in one turn which is how this is going to work if i did not get the double attack the deathless guardians and the vanguard would be able to survive the onslaught and would be able to defend against everything that's happening there but i am going to go ahead and swing through it um, keeping him chained he would normally be he would normally break free right now but he cannot change until the until the start of his turn. And this is where I'm going to be pushing through enough damage. And ending up winning the game. So there is the tomb. Hopefully you guys got to see a little bit more of Hex. This is really a lot of fun. If you play it, there's so much customization. There's so much to do. You have equipment. You have so many things that can happen all at the same time. And there is my gold reward. Um, I'm, I got some smoldering dead packs. I'm going to open up one of those packs right now. You get five things. Uh, I got two common cards. Uh, one decaying giant. This is not healed at the end of turn. Chaotic cloak. Uh, chaotic murmurs cost minus one. All right. And nomadic's vest. Lost wanderer. Um, spell shield unblockable. Wow, I, I haven't even seen the lost wanderer yet. So interesting, interesting card. Uh, it's a four drop two two spirit and um, I'm gonna try to open this but it's gonna fail and I have to open it from from the store remove the gem ow hot 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 and I got a pucid matchmaker since this is the arbor day um arbor day of no is it arbor yeah uh, so exhaust two other troops you control create a love child and put it into play the love child is a zero cost troop. As this enter plays, it gets plus one to plus four attack at random, plus one 
defense, the plus four defense at random. And for each of the following powers, there's a 25% per chance, 25 chance this gets that power. Crush, Flight, Lethal, Life Drain, Rage 1, Speed, Spell Shield, Steadfast, and Swift Strike. So um, interesting, interesting card to say the least. Anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'm going to open up my second pack and then hope to see you guys playing some Hex. Go ahead and message me. The community in Hex right now, as I'm making this video, is one of the best communities that I have seen out there. If you need help with certain cards, need a couple of commons to, to round out your deck, people have been giving away those cards pretty uh, pretty easy or pretty readily. So definitely go ahead and check that out. I'm going to go ahead and open up some packs right here. Uh, what card did I get out of this pack? Uh, Decaying Giant. Wow, it, it almost looks like the same exact pack. All right, so Toolbox Glove, Junk Repurposer, some more cards there. And finally, this pack here. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what is in it. I am going to get... What did I get? I got a Maggot. Splutatula Maggot. All right, Chaotic Cloak again. Uh, Lightning Brave. Oh, Lightning Brave with plus two defense. That actually is really good. A four, three, four troop. You can come in and block a troop and, and deal some serious damage that way. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And definitely, if you guys haven't ch done so, please check out HexTCG.com. This game is a lot of fun. And, well, hope to see you guys at, at some of the events that are going on around the world. I know the Hex Invitational is going to be in Orange County, California in early March 2016. If you guys are nearby, I will be at the event. Um, stop by and say hi.